What's going on, smart people? I've been doing my homework in LaTeX for the past couple weeks, and I gotta say, I, I really like it, and I figured for today's video, I'd show you how I go about formatting my homeworks in LaTeX. Now, huge disclaimer before the video gets started, I think I know how to do a lot of things in LaTeX, but I know how to do a lot of things in like one way. And there's tons of ways to do one thing in LaTeX and I'm pretty sure I always find the most inefficient way of doing things. So when you go about deciding if you wanna start doing LaTeX for yourself and you're watching this video, make sure you read the comments to see what people are calling me an idiot for for not doing. Because more often than not, when someone is like, Andrew, why are you doing it this way instead of this way in LaTeX? It's because I didn't know that that was a way. But let's just get right into it, guys. So I do all of this in Tech Studio. It's free. I'll leave a link in the description so that you can install it for yourself. Uh, and when I get there, I always use one of the template documents. So new from template, and then I always use the article one, kind of arbitrarily, actually. And one of the first things I do, so you can just run this right now, compile it. I just realized quantum is up. Um, not too much to see. One of the things that I don't like is how how wide the margins are, so I always end up changing that. And I always, I change it in all the homeworks, so I basically just copy and paste it, to be honest, from the previous homeworks. I always end up using these packages for the most part. And whenever you use a package, I was, I'm pretty sure you always have to do it before you begin the document. Makes sense to me. Um, actually, let, let's test this theory. Use package bracket. Can we do it in the document? No, okay, didn't think so. Okay, if we run this, uh, now the margins are a little bit closer. We also get to use like certain math fonts, uh, brocket notation, so you can use like kets and bras. Let's go ahead and get started. I always get rid of the abstract part because I don't really need it. And what I do, let's go ahead and title this. This will be, this my homework, author me. Great. Uh, if you don't want to have the title, or not the title, the date on the page that gives away how late you waited to start on your homework, what you can do is you can just do backslash date. That's not how you spell that. And if you don't put anything in there, it'll just get rid of the date, which is pretty, I think that that's pretty useful. Um, I always have the, the problem number. I always create a new section for that, which is this little slash command. So I can say that this is a problem one. And that'll put things right up top where this one is. And then I like to just say what the problem is. So let's just come up with like a fake problem. Say, uh, find the x component of the following vector. There's a, now I'm gonna come up with an equation for a certain vector. And there's a couple ways to do equations. Um, one of which is by doing a slash command begin equation. Equation, okay. And, uh, so if I want my, let's just call it some vector, some ket vector v. Okay. You'll see that uh, it comes up with the equation right here. I didn't really write an, an equal sign, but whatever. And then it has the number of the equation so that you can reference it if you want to. Sometimes equations aren't that important and I don't like to have the number because then the numbers really stack up and I'll be like, you can see from equation 69 that whatever. So sometimes if it's not a particularly important equation, what I'll do is I'll just do backslash and the bracket and do the exact same thing, cat V. And then run it and it'll get rid of that number. So it'll save what you actually, the equations that you think deserve having a number, which I think is kind of useful. Let's go ahead and make this vector equal to, we're gonna have some components attached to some basis vectors and Cartesian coordinates. So you could say like A, okay, this is actually a good point. Say I wanna write the basis vector in Cartesian coordinates for the x component that would be hat e sub x, right? And if I have to do that multiple times for all of the coordinates, it gets kind of annoying to have to write the slash command. And this is the first point that I wanted to make of how I how I change this. And this is also something that I think someone told me not to do but I don't remember how they said to change it, so I'm just gonna do it anyway. Um, if you have something that you find yourself continuously writing and you don't wanna keep writing it, you wanna substitute it for something shorter, there's something called a new command. And in the first, there's two brackets. In the first bracket is what you want the new command to be called, and the second bracket is what you've been calling it. So for example, if I don't wanna write this anymore, this is what I don't wanna write, then I wanna just call this, say, 
E H X X. So this is going to be damn it. There we go. So instead of writing backslash E hat E sub X, I just want to write this. So that means that instead of that, let me just write backslash E H X. And there we go. So it doesn't affect this part of the document. I, just, I say that like you can see where I'm pointing to. It doesn't affect the thing that's actually rendered. Um, it just renders the code that you have to write. Okay, so let's make it this. Let's do the exact same thing for the Y and Z components. It'll be Y. This is only useful if you can remember what you shortened it to. And then Z. So A, E, X plus B E H Y plus C E H Z. Cool. So there's our vector. And normally I do this much faster because I know what I want to do. So at first glance, it looks like this is super slow. And to be honest, it kind of is, but you start to get some of that conservation of time uh, when you have to do a lot of copy and pasting. Then it's like, ha ha, I can't do that if I was writing this out with pen and paper. Okay, so find the x component of this vector. Now this is the part where I would solve it, so I'd say that this is where I'm doing my solution. I'm gonna do another new command because I don't like, uh, here, let me just write it out real quick. Command, one of the commands for bold is backslash text bf, which is a little unnecessary, so I just changed that to bd for bold, I guess. So if I want to say that this is where I'm starting my solution, I do backslash BD solution. Oops. Damn it. Just to signify that, all right, problem solving starts now. Write a little bit, so I'd say something like um, the X component, damn it, X component of, if you want to do uh, equation stuff, whether it be Greek letters or actual equations in the text itself without beginning an equation or doing this thing. You can do that with this little dollar sign, double dollar sign, and then anything inside of it, you can do using math symbols and stuff. So if I want to do ket v, and here, that's totally fine. If I were to get rid of that, it's going to throw an error. So, got to keep it. I have no idea, by the way, why this is giving me problems or giving me a red thing right there because it's still rendering and it's not giving me an error. So we're going to ignore that. <laughs> the The component, the x component of this vector is just the inner product. So I always like to explain my thought process of cat x, no, no. with the x basis vector. I'm pretty, I, I kind of, I always find myself, <laughs> I'm being more conscious now of how many times I hit compile to see like it update. I realize I do that quite a bit. So the x component of v is just the inner product of v with the x basis vector. Sometimes I'll give a little, give a little new line. That way it's not on the same line as this. And now let's do the equation. So for this one, I'm probably going to want multiple lines in my equation. Same thing happens. It's also more important because I'm solving it, so I might want it to actually be referenceable. So let's just do the beacon equation. Um, so let's do bracket. Is equal to, whoops, is equal to, um, this is going to be kind of annoying. A, what did I call it? <laughs> See, there you go. It's only helpful if you remember what you shorted it to. E, H, X. I always use C dot for my dot product, but there's there might be a better one than that. I don't know. E, H, X plus B, uh, E, H, Y, C dot, E, H, Y, plus C, E, H, Z, C dot E H Z. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea why it's giving me this right here, but it's, it's rendering fine, and that's that's all that matters. Okay, so the, the dot product is the dot product of the vector with the x component, the x basis vector, which is what I've written here. And then I don't want to have to begin another equation, I just want to continue this on to like the next line. And to do that, you do this begin 
split. Okay, and then end split. Um, and this just allows you to have multiple lines in your in your equation. And then I want it to align with this equal sign, so I want everything to go up there. The new line command is just double backslash and equals a. Right, so that that whole and just says on the next line, align it with respect to this spot here. So I want my equal sign to be aligned. So this is just a. That's how I do that. There's nothing. It's nothing crazy. If I were not to have this begin split, it wouldn't let you do that. If we don't have this a here or this an ampersand, then who knows where it'll end up? So it's always nice to tell it where to align. And equals and equals. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, if I were to do all, all, all of my new problems, I always start with like a new section. So section, sec, if I could spell. Problem two. Um, I don't know. Prove the earth is reachy flat. <laughs> Just a little GR joke for you. Okay, I think you guys get the idea for that. Um, it can be a little monotonous and tedious at times to be doing all of these equations, but it definitely has its benefits. For example, the I think with the homework I was just on, was it this one? Let's go all the way down. Yeah, with this, this would be terrible to have to handwrite over and over and over again. Honestly, a lot of what I did was just copy and paste and then look at it. It's so much neater, so definitely has its benefits and as you can see I do use the new command thing a lot I don't remember the the reason why someone said not to use it at, at the very least it does work so uh, if you commented not to use it in the previous video can you reiterate why because I don't really remember it seems so helpful and I use it quite a bit so if there's a better way to be doing it please let me know but there's not much else to it pretty much with LaTeX in my experience it's like if you want to learn how to do something you pretty much Google how to do it it was that it was that experience when I had to learn how to do like uh, matrices. Like you can do multiple types of matrices if you want to have, let's say, a poly matrix. You could just do begin uh, p matrix. P matrix p doesn't stand for poly; it's parentheses because it'll either give you a square bracket matrix or a parentheses bracket. So the p is for the parentheses one. Uh, let's just do what is it? Oh, this is embarrassing. I think it's zero one minus one zero hooray <laughs> okay so there's tons of things that you can obviously do with that uh, there's also sidebars that have little math shortcuts that I barely ever use because by the time I find it I could have just written it in the first place so you have like miscellaneous math s symbols and stuff that you can use like I said I don't really use it too much so they also have other commands that you can shortcut but by the time like I said I remember what it is I could have just written it out in the first place I really don't use LaTeX to its full extent the most I use it for is either homeworks or might do some some figures or some bibliography stuff some bid tech stuff but there's so much that you can do with it that I'm not the person to go to this is just how I use it for homework um, let me know in the comment section if you're considering using LaTeX for writing up your homework assignments I it seems like my professors appreciate it because everything is so clear and there's there's no eraser marks everything I wrote I had to manually type up so it's not like is that a six or a or a Batman symbol it's it's what I meant so the professor seemed to enjoy it I think it's worth learning you gotta learn it at some point it's the industry standard for physics really so let me know in the comment section if you're gonna start using LaTeX or if you've been playing around with it also let me know in the comment section of what I'm being done with and what I should be doing when when doing my homeworks in LaTeX and I'll see you guys there I'll see you tomorrow